Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm Will Wyvern. Today I want to talk about osteomancy or throwing the bones, reading the bones. As always, these are my thoughts, my opinions, my beliefs. Uh, let me start off with one thing first. Uh, modern man, Homo sapiens, goes back to about 300, 350,000 years ago. The earliest writing goes back to about 7,000, 8,000 years ago. So for the first 292, 93,000 years that Homo sapiens was alive in existence, there was no writing. There was no written journals. There was no written history. So when people say a certain thing is a certain thing, and people did things a certain way back then, they don't know. Every book you read, every Google search you do, every YouTube video you watch, those are people's opinions, theories, their own beliefs about what happened. No one knows when osteomancy began. No one knows when was the first time someone threw bones down and looked at them and said, I can see something. And no one knows why somebody threw bones down. Did they throw bones down because they liked the sound it made? Did they throw bones down because it was interesting to look at? It was entertaining? No one knows. Everything you look up, every Google search, every book you read, every YouTube video, they're all theories. They're all pretty much imaginations. We're trying to imagine what was going through early man's mind when he did these things. And the thing about osteomancy, did they do it trying to read the future? Did they do it they were, because they were trying to speak to their ancestors or their god or goddess? Or they were trying to get an idea of when the animals would migrate or when the animals would mate or where the animals were heading? No one knows. This is all conjecture. This is all make -believe, uh, made up stuff. We were trying to figure this out. Now, when I do osteomancy, I've been doing this for almost 25 years, and I have my peaks and valleys. There are sometimes I'm really into it, and I really want to learn and see what I can see, and sometimes it just it doesn't work well for me. The past month, it has been really a factor in my visits to my realm and my ancestors, and it's something that I've started to pick up again. I just recently purchased a bunch of bones. I've got some new runes. I've got some crystals. I'm going to tie all this in together. Now, when I throw the bones, I do not do it with a certain question in mind or something that I'm looking for. When I do divination, I'm opening myself to the message from the deity, messages from my ancestors, my god, goddess, my spirit animal, my spirit guide. I use divination to open myself to incoming messages. I don't go to the realm of my ancestors. I don't throw bones. I don't read tarot and oracle cards to seek a specific answer to a specific question. I leave myself open to whatever they want to show me because, to be honest, they know us better than we know ourselves. We are biased. We want certain things to happen. We want certain answers. We're looking for a certain answer when I throw these bones. When we open ourselves to outside opinion, our ancestors, our deity, we're, we may hear the ugly truth. 
we may not like what we hear, but it's probably something we need to hear. And a quick example, there was a woman I knew, she was looking for a relationship. She wanted a boyfriend. So whenever she do tarot cards or oracle cards or pendulum or whatever, the main question she always asked, when am I going to find a boyfriend? When am I going to be in a relationship? When am I going to find true love? She never opened herself to the message that the ancestors or her goddess had for her. And that answer was, get yourself fixed before you start looking for other people. Fix what's wrong with you, and then you can open yourself to a new relationship. When she finally opened herself to what the goddess had to say to her, that's what she heard. And she was able to start fixing herself, finding those things that were wrong with her, fixing them, and then look for a relationship. And that's what I do with osteomancy, with throwing the bones. I, when I gather the bones up in my hand and I hold them up for reading for to the deity, I ask the deity to bless me with knowledge. I ask my ancestors, share your experiences with me. I don't ask for a specific question or answer. I just say, I'm open to whatever you want to show me. I'm open to your knowledge. I'm open to your wisdom. Share it with me. And then I throw down the bones. I trust that the deity, my ancestors, they're going to show me what I need to see. So when I look down at the bones, I'm not looking for something. I'm not trying to find something. I just let my mind go, my vision maybe blur a little bit in and out until I see what they want to show me. And the key thing is be open to everything. Even if it's an ugly answer or the ugly truth or what you don't want to hear, be open to it. Now, one thing I always say is effort equals results. What you put into magic, what you put into osteomancy, is going to determine your results. If you only do osteomancy once or twice, throw a couple bones, that doesn't work for me, and leave, you're never going to find what you're looking for. You're never going to receive that knowledge, receive those messages. You need to put the effort forward. You need to open yourself to that communication. And the more you do that, the more you practice, the more you study, the more you listen to opinions like mine, my opinions might not be the right ones for you, but you're making the effort to expand your knowledge. You're making the effort to learn more possibilities. So I don't want to get too much too specific because everybody's journey is going to be different. The way you throw bones, the way you read bones, it's all going to be a little different. So what I did was I went to a reputable, a reputable dealer, someone who was recommended by a friend, who collects bones in a humane way, cleans them professionally, sanitizes them, labels them. It's a little more expensive, but I know I'm getting a safe product. I know I'm not getting something that's damaged or the animals were hurt. It's all done humanely. And I went for smaller bones this time. These are all new. These are, I, I haven't even consecrated these yet. I'm going to do that this full moon. Once you get your bones, consecrate them. That means ask your deity, your god, your goddess, your ancestors to bless the bones, to use them to communicate with you, and have them consecrated. Once they're consecrated for use in divination and 
for reading and receiving messages, then find something to throw them on or in. You can use a tablecloth, you can use the ground. I use this little wooden platter that I bought. Um, a glass bowl is good, but you want something that's going to be big enough to where you can have some in the center, some on the, on the edge. Now, when you throw them, again, you're going to place them all in your hands. And if you want to ask a question, do that. If that works for you, do that. If you want to ask, when am I going to find a relationship? When am I going to get a new job? You know, how are my finances going to be in a year? If you want to ask that specific question and that's your belief, do it. I leave myself open to whatever they want to share with me. So I put them in my hand, then I throw them down into the, onto the bowl, the plate, the tablecloth, whatever. Now, some people separate their area into spaces. They'll be like, okay, this, this half is for the present, this half is for the future, this, half, this part is for the past, or some people will do, um, this is the most important, and this is the least important. They'll set up zones. Do whatever works for you. I like to make a, a circle on the inside. I, I envision a, a black circle on the inside. And then when I throw the bones, the ones that are inside the circle are the most important message the deity wants to share with me. That's the most important thing. The ones on the outside are still factors, are still things that might play into the message, but they're not as important. Now, when I look at the bones, the way I read bones is what was the function of that bone in the animal's life. When I look at ribs, like these are bow constrictor ribs, when I look at a rib, I see something that gives the body shape and structure and function. It protects the heart. It gives you strength to stand up straight. Um, so when I look at ribs, when I throw bones and I look at a rib, I look at what else it's touching. And to me, I see this is something to do with either my well-being, my strength, my heart, my ability to stand strong. That's what I look at. Then when I look at something like an ankle bone or a, a leg bone, then I'm looking at, this lets me travel. This lets me move forward or maybe move backward. When I look at a, te a teeth, then I'm looking at, these are either things that the animal would show their teeth to frighten off a an attacker, or they use the teeth to eat, to tear their food, to capture their prey. So when I throw bones and I look at teeth, then I'm like, okay, is this something, is this message saying that I need to bring in something to my life? I need to make something a part of me? Is it I need to protect myself? I need to scare off demons or evil beings or bad energy? Um, and then when the bones... The way, the way that I read the bones, if they touch, then I believe they're connected. The message is connected. If they're, one is on top of the other, then the one that's on top is more important. But the one on the bottom, it still plays a part in the reading because it's actually giving the one on top height. So look at these bones and how they all interact. I do not look for literal concrete, written in stone answers. I am very intuitive. I let my mind wander. I look at the images. I open myself to the deity and I let them show me what they want me to see. I may not see anything at first when I look at this plate, but as I look at it, I might start to come into focus and say, okay, that claw bone 
is touching the rib, but is kind of far away from that tooth, that other tooth bone or that vertebrae. So what does that mean? What is that? What is that symbolizing? And I let myself think about it. Now, before I go any further, the most, what I think is the most important thing you can do is you're doing osteomancy is get a journal. Get a notebook and a pen and use it to write down everything you think, everything you feel, everything you see. Write it all down because some things are going to be good and some things are going to be bad. Some things aren't going to work in your practice and some things are. Everybody is different. So experiment, explore. Now, throwing bones is more than just throwing, you know, bones into a bowl. Some people like to mix their bones with something else. You can take arrowheads. I like arrowheads because to me, arrowheads show protection, strength. They show a lot. Now, what I do is I put one or two arrowheads down in the bowl first, and then I throw the bones on top. And again, how things are placed tells me what my reading is going to be. If instead of arrowheads, you might want to use runes. Get some, if you're, if you're good with runes, get some runes and do the same thing. You can put them down in the bowl first, throw them down in the bowl, and then throw the bones on top. Or you can throw them at the same time. Again, experiment. Try different things. See what works for you. Another good thing are little crystals. Now these, be careful when you throw these because some bones will break. Some bones are brittle. So maybe put these down in the bowl first. Um, keys. People like to have, you know, little keys or if you want to do big keys, Throw them with the bones or throw them down first. Again, the effort you put into this is going to equal the results you get. The more effort, I think, the more results you'll get. So, osteomancy, to me, is a great way to get messages from my deity, from my ancestors. If, I'm, if I want to do something different besides uh, visiting the realm of my ancestors, to get their knowledge or their experiences or their wisdom, I use osteomancy. I use throwing the bones. It's a good way to try another means of communication. The more, the more methods of communication you have, the easier it's going to be to get that message. Tarot cards, oracle cards, osteomancy, Ouija boards, pendulum, there are so many ways to communicate and open lines of communication with those who are trying to communicate with us. We just have to make that effort. Osteomancy is a great way to do that. It may work for you. It may not. I just suggest trying it. If you don't have the money to invest, then either just visualize doing this. Visualize that you've got a, bones in your hand and you're throwing the bones down. Visualize that they're, the bones are on the ground and try and see patterns. Now, I may go ahead and throw some short videos of different patterns down that you can watch. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to work or how I feel about that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, gonna to experiment with that. I'll see what I can do. Um, I, want, I want you to try it. I want you to have as many ways to communicate with your deity, your god, your goddess, your ancestors, your spirit animal, your spirit guide. The, like I said, the more ways you have to communicate, the more chances of getting those messages that may change your life, that may make your life better, that may give you the wisdom and knowledge you need to grow. So, osteomancy, throwing the bones. We don't know when it was invented. We don't know why early man did it. 
but the reason I do it is to get that communication from my deity and my ancestors. Find what works for you. Find what's a good method for you. I use bones, sometimes the arrowhead, sometimes runes, sometimes crystals, sometimes keys. Practice, practice, practice. And you will be, I think you'll be rewarded. I think you will, when you put forth that effort and you show that you're putting forth that effort, I think you're going to be re rewarded. Um, like I said, I may add some videos on here to show different readings and give you an idea of how you can practice. All I ask is that you take what I've said, think about it. It may be for you. It may not be for you. These are my opinions, my beliefs, and my thoughts. I share them with you to give you some growth in what you can experience and what you're willing to explore. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, but that's osteomancy for me. That's throwing the bones. And as always, thank you.